These are my top five most used pieces of camping gear this year. Gear up and get outside. The first item on my most used gear list of the year is this Gossamer Gear Snack Sack. What I like about this was one, the price. I think it cost 20 bucks. That was a great deal on a lightweight, water resistant, maybe waterproof piece of gear. Now, all it is is Tyvek. Gossamer Gear is known for making a lot of ultralight backpacking gear. And I did get this with backpacking in mind but now it's always in my camp box. This is kind of my catch-all bag, if not my food bag. Literally right now, look, it just has a bunch of stuff in it from my recent failed camping trip where I tried to go out on, on an e-bike and then my battery went dead before I got there. I have literally used this to organize my camping gear more than any other bag I have. I've taken it on hunting trips, backpacking trips, camping trips, family camping trips, car camping trips, day trips. This just is handy for anything. It's not fancy, the features aren't super sophisticated, the closures aren't super sophisticated. It has a Velcro closure right there at the top, cinches right there, but then it's a roll top. I love roll tops, I'm a sucker for roll tops. That helps blow the air out, it helps compress it. Then it has just a basic buckle, just a little nylon buckle here. And that's it, carry it around like that. You could toss some cordage over a limb and use this as a bear bag. I think they call it the snack sack because it's intended to be used as like a food bag. I have certainly used it like that, but it's also the thing I put all my little stuff in, my headlamp, my extra batteries, emergency gear, lighter, all that kind of little stuff that just floats around in your bag otherwise, especially if you use duffel bags like me or just big one pocket bags that don't have tons of compartments. This is where all my little stuff goes. It has a flat bottom, so when you set it on the ground, it doesn't tip over easy. You can hang it up any where, I mean, it's super simple, it's also cheap, and this is something that literally goes with me on every single trip. So it definitely meets the qualification for most used camping gear. Okay, for the next thing, I was just gonna show you this can cooler, but then I wanted to demonstrate that I actually have multiples. I don't really care about the brand on these. This is a vacuum insulated stainless steel can cooler. Okay, these are for 12 ounce cans. This one's from Arctic. Got one here that was really cheap at Bass Pro Shops or Cabela's. This one still has my last drink in it, and it's a smart, whoever that guy is. Smart bottle, what are they called? I don't remember what they're called. Oh, Hydro Flask. Hydro Flask makes them, Yeti makes them, all kinds of people make them, there's tons of generic ones. It doesn't really matter which one you use, but this is something I use every day. Also at home, but definitely when I'm camping. In fact, that's why I have multiples because one just lives in my family camping box, one lives in my solo camping box, and then one lives in my house. Now I like my Coca-Cola cold. I take a cold Coca-Cola out of one of my coolers or my fridge, I put it in there. Then I don't have to rush to get that real zappy fizz nice and cold as fast as possible. Now if your beverage of choice is beer or otherwise, you might have similar feelings. You like it to be cold. This will make the cold last longer. It really does make a difference. And it also means you don't have to shotgun it to get it down before it gets hot in the summer. The Zinbivy light bed. Now most of us who camp also sleep at night. And I like to have something that makes me comfortable to sleep in. Mummy bags are not very comfortable for me. I usually sleep on my stomach or my side and I like to spread my legs out. Don't like being constricted inside of a mummy bag. So my first attempt to change things up after a mummy bag was one of these kind of classic old Coleman full-size rectangular flannel and cotton sleeping bags. Then I tried a quilt. I've tried a couple of different quilts until I discovered the Zen Bivy bed. In one respect, the Zen Bivy light bed is simply a fancy quilt with some extra features. Indeed, it serves as a quilt. But what's more, it also has this sheet thing. Now this acts sort of like what a sheet would do on your bed at home, except that it has these attachment points for your quilt. You can attach it all the way down if you like, except for down here by the feet, or you can attach it not at all. So if it's really hot, I attach hardly anything. I just lay that quilt over me or kick it off me as needed. But if it's cold, I'll attach everything up, I'll cinch things down, and I'll eliminate all those drafts, which is one of the problems a lot of people have with normal quilts. Now I know some people dog on these guys for saying, well, it's just like a sleeping bag anymore. I disagree. I love it because it is a hybrid system. It's also a flexible system. If all I want is a quilt, that's all I take. If I want the whole system, like when I go backpacking, I'll take the sheet and the quilt with a pad that fits. Even when I go winter camping or snow camping in one of my big canvas tents, I'm car camping. I have plenty of room for gear and I don't care about weight. This still goes with me because then I sleep in that big rectangular old cotton sleeping bag I've had forever and I lay this on top. I've done a full review on the Zen Bivy bed. In fact, it was one of the first review videos I ever did. So you can go and look at that for more details. Just know that this is pretty lightweight. That's very nice for backpacking. If I recall, it's like 33 ounces, the sheet, 
plus the light bed. This is the 25 degree version and it's very flexible and versatile. That's why I love it. This one will also come to no surprise to any of you who've watched up my other videos because I wear this all the time and I talk about it a lot. And one of the reasons I love it is because it packs into its own pocket and it's so darn small. This is the Decathlon MT100 hooded puffy jacket. This is a real down jacket. It's made of a synthetic nylon material shell. It's got a DWR water resistant coating on it. As shown, it stuffs into its own pocket. It fits great, although you usually have to order a size up. I also love the hood because it really hugs around your face. I found this jacket to be very abrasion resistant and it's very lightweight. The brand on this jacket is Four Claws. That is a Decathlon house brand. They control most of their supply chain and they make excellent gear. They're actually the biggest sporting goods retailer in the world. Now, as far as a single piece of apparel goes, outdoor clothing, this is literally the one that goes on every trip. Even in the summertime when I don't expect inclement weather, I stuff this in because it's lightweight and small and it packs down. And especially here in the West, we can get cold at night. And so even if it's 80, 90 degrees during the day, it might get really chilly at night and you're gonna need a jacket and this just fits the bill every time. What this is not is waterproof. So if you're gonna have rain, you're gonna need a rain jacket. But this is an excellent insulating layer for any outdoor activity camping, hiking, backpacking, hunting, fishing, motorcycling, and so on. And perhaps the best thing about it is that it is relatively cheap. It's only a hundred bucks and you can often find it on sale. And that is far less expensive than a similar jacket from another name brand. Like half as much, a third as much as a lot of them. The last one, this was very difficult for me to determine and it doesn't show on camera very well. This is a canvas tarp from White Duck Outdoors. Now, honestly, I don't know that the brand name is particularly interesting or important here. This is a good quality one. I've used it a lot now for well over a year and I like it. Obviously, I'm not gonna take this backpacking, but this is something that is always in the truck even when I go on a backpacking trip. This canvas tarp is simply a jack of all trades. I use it to cover up gear in the back of my truck when I've got it piled high. I'm taking the whole family camping. I've used it to protect my gear from rain at night at camp. You could set it up as a canopy or a fly. We use it as a ground mat. We put it inside our big canvas tent when we're camping as a family just to kind of keep dirt off the floor and make it easy to take it out and shake out. We use it as a doormat in front of the entryway to our tent so that you kind of stomp off your feet as you go in. And this summer, even when we went camping with some extended family and had some little nieces and nephews crawling around in the dirt. We lay this out and it just acts as a play mat and just keeps them a little less dirty. It's way better than any blue tarp situation in my opinion. It is heavier, it is more expensive, but it's not gonna break the bank, it'll last forever. It's also great for hunting trips to transport your game back from the hunt where you wanna wrap that meat in something to keep the elements off it, but you also want it to breathe so that you don't breed a bunch of extra bacteria on your meat. All right, folks, now your turn. What's your most used piece of camping gear? Let me know in the comments and share it with everybody else so we can all benefit. Here at Outdoor Empire, we have just reached one full year of publishing videos on YouTube. To celebrate, we've done a couple of things. One, I got a little bit of merch going on. This hat here is an all black trucker hat. Links below if you're interested in one of those. I also invite you to subscribe to the channel. At Outdoor Empire, we do a whole lot of gear reviews. Next, go watch this video, which is an extended version of some of the most useful camping gear I know. Then as I like to say, gear up and get outside.